One of the uh, biggest topics uh, that this coronavirus has had an impact on is our education system. We've been forced to cut short the semester, if you want to call it, the school term, if you want to call it, by a number of weeks, five weeks. It sent our children back home for the safety of themselves, for the safety of the nation. But there are many, many questions still left to be answered, and it's really thrown not only the education ministry, but the education system as well into what you would call a state of chaos, really. It's, and it's not because we've had to take these measures. The education system will suffer a little bit. We want to welcome to the show this morning Minister of Education, Anthony Garcia, who is on the line, joins us via phone. Minister, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. I'm happy to, to join you this morning. Thank you very much for being here. We are less than 10 days away from the scheduled SEA examination. Is there any update you can provide to the nation this morning? Well, it is obvious that the exams cannot be held on April the 2nd. This is quite obvious. As a result, the Ministry of Education has been working assiduously together with CXC, because, you know, CXC has jurisdiction over this exam, to ensure that our students are not shortchanged. And towards this end, we are looking at options that might be available with respect to rescheduling the examination. Following, you know, when this following last week, closer. following last week's Thursday meeting with <clears throat> Tutor, how close are we to a decision? The situation is so fluid that we cannot commit ourselves to a decision right away with respect to the reopening of schools. We met, in fact, Cabinet has appointed a committee to look at the effects of the virus on the education system. And the committee was looking at middle May. We are hoping still that this can happen if schools reopen on the 20th of April. However, as I said, the situation is so fluid that things change even on a daily basis. And therefore, we cannot commit ourselves to an exact date when the examination will be held. You know, let's talk a little bit about the CSEC exams as well, because those are also on the horizon. Yes, and again, these exams are administered and they are under the jurisdiction of CXC. CXC had given us a timetable with respect to the exams and what is supposed to be done. And I'm sure a number of our students in particular are concerned, especially where their SBAs are concerned. Let me give you an example. For example, the SBAs for CSEC was supposed to be submitted by the 30th of April. And the SBAs for CAPE, they were supposed to be submitted by the, the 4th of May. Sorry, by the 31st of May. Again, we are looking at that because it does not seem as though those deadlines can be met. Um, however, with both SEA and the, the second CAPE, the Ministry of Education is doing everything possible to ensure that our children are well served. In the case of CAPE, um, CAPE and CSEC, these are regional examinations, and in whatever we do, whatever decision we make, it must be in concurrence with the regional government. Mr. So Minister, you talk about... Cabinet met last week, and uh, we examined certain options that were given to us by CXC. Again, although Cabinet would like, to, would like a certain option to be carried forward, the situation is so dynamic. It changes almost on an hourly basis that we cannot commit ourselves to any specific deadline. Is your ministry working on any alternative forms of educating? Because it's a crucial part of the year for not only SEA students, not only CSEC and CAPE students, uh, you know, it, it's an important part of the year in terms of starting the school year, uh, the, the school calendar year. Are your ministry, is your ministry working on any alternative forms of education? Exactly. This is a question that I'm happy to respond to because it will give our parents and our students some measure of solace. The, the Ministry of Education, we are working assiduously to ensure students have continued access to learning materials through various media, and we have identified television as a, main, as a major source. However, 
we are looking at, and in fact, we have already implemented some online activities. And that these would cover both primary and secondary. At the primary level, the learning materials for primary schools, these have been uploaded with the Ministry of Education Learning Management System. We have two platforms that we have put in place, the Learning Management System and the EMIS, the Education Management Information System. So information is being uploaded on these and toolkits for more than 600 lessons and other materials have been submitted by teachers and they are accessible for the students. In terms of the secondary level, the majority of our secondary school teachers, and I need to congratulate and compliment them, they have put measures in place for teachers to continue to teach using various platforms. As I said just now, the Ministry of Education has developed two major platforms that will allow for the uploading of contact for the upload of content and that can be accessed by our students. Mr. Minister, I just education management information system and the LMS the learning management system, these are two and they these will, these will allow for test lessons and interactive content. So these are some of the areas that we are looking at. However, as with everything, there are some challenges. And the two major challenges are, one, the lack of internet in certain areas, and the second one is that some of our students do not have devices that will allow them to utilize the platform. In our effort to correct this, we are working with the telecom Telecommunications Agency of Trinidad and Tobago, and also the Ministry of Public Administration, so that they can provide hotspots where, that, where our students will be able to access the internet, uh, the internet, and as a result, they will be able to have access to some of the platforms that we have put in place. Mr. Minister, are any conversations being had at your ministry for the, regarding the rest of the school year? I ask you this because scientists are saying that a vaccine could be many, many months away. Well, that is one of our major concerns because, you know, when school remains closed, it means that our students in the main do not have access to the quality education that we are committed to provide. However, as I said before, to bridge that gap, we are putting things in place so that our students and our, and our teachers would be able to access materials that can be used for learning and teaching. In addition to this, we have, we, we have been in contact and in consultation with TTT, and they are providing online classes. Incidentally, those classes will begin today for the SA exam students. In terms of the term itself, as you know, the, the third term is supposed to start on the 20th of April and come to an end on the 3rd of July. We are hoping that if things go as we can, that we can extend that term perhaps by one week. And this is one of the things that we have been discussing, but again, we cannot come to any final decision where that is concerned. Mr. Minister, I just want to also ask you as well, has this entire circumstance, this situation that the ministry is now in, uh, is it now time, uh, do you think, moving into the, into the future, do you think it is now time that the body, such as yours and other bodies that uh, target dates for the SEA exam, for CSEC exams, do you think it is, uh, in, in the next few years, you will have to perhaps cater for an alternative date, to have two dates uh, for, to avoid circumstances like this? That is a good question because we are in consultation with our major stakeholders. Lastly, for example, we met with the Association of the National Boards, we met with Twitter, we met with the Primary Schools Principals Association, and we also met with the associations that represent the secondary school teachers. And during this discussion, we are looking at alternative measures, alternative methods, so that we can be futuristic in our planning. I must say that the Ministry of Education, without trying to blow a trumpet, has been very proactive where this is concerned, and at the moment we got wind that there might be some disruption, 
to the education system because of this flu, we have been working diligently, assiduously, to ensure that things are put in place so that our students and our teachers will be able to continue the process of learning and teaching. Okay, Mr. Minister, thank you very much for joining us this morning to give us an update on the education system. We really appreciate it. Minister of Education Anthony Garcia talking to us during uh, what is a turbulent time for the school's education system here in Trinidad and Tobago. Remember, you can also tune into CNC3 where we've also got SEA classes ongoing because it's so, so important. And uh, this is just I'm tr throwing this out to parents out in Trinidad and Tobago. Remember that the pandemic won't last forever and your child still has to write secondary entrance assessment examination, be it in May, be it in June, whether it's in September, whenever it is. Their lives go on. Their lives go on as it has been going on even throughout this pandemic. It will go on. There will come a time when they have to write the exam. So we do encourage you to not only continue working with your child, but also uh, get them in front of the television when there is SEA uh, going on. We see there are a number of initiatives as well to have uh, exams online and, and practice exams. So please continue working with your child and do not see this as an early vacation. You're watching The Morning Brew here on CNC3. When we come back, stocks have been falling across the world. It's been terrible for America, terrible for Europe. Surad Ram Kilawan will give us the latest on the stocks and what you should be investing or not investing in as we start a new investing week next.